The biggest mistake I made in my business was not hiring a professional to help me with my money. Not just my taxes, but the actual plan I had for my business. I was completely lost on how to handle taxes, what to do with profit, and how to maintain my income. I had to find a better way. That's when I found Core Financial. Core Financial is a team of tax professionals that actually care about building real relationships with their clients. They run my books, keep me up to date with my finances, and make sure I'm taking full advantage of all of my tax benefits. Are you struggling with your finances? Look no further. Core Financial is a brand that is nationwide that can help you with your business. Both Nick and I are huge fans of Core and they can help you too. Check out howtofilmweddings.com slash core to schedule a consultation today. Core Financial, real relationships, no surprises. Welcome to How to Film Weddings. My name is John Bunn, and I'm joined by Nick Miller for a brand new, super fresh episode of the How to Film Weddings podcast. But first, Nick Miller, hi. How are you? Hi. That's it? Just hi? Not, I said, how are you? Oh, I, I, I don't know. I missed that. I, I, you said a super fresh episode, and I was just wondering what the difference was between fresh and super fresh. There is none difference. <laughs> 50% is better than none percent. That is true. 50% is better than none percent. <laughs> no, but it's a new episode. It's a new week. We've got some fresh content for you. We had our good friend Taylor Petrinovich on the show. I she think you hosts, said that right. I think I did. Taylor Petrinovich think, rolls off the tongue. We just interviewed her talking about intentional growth. She started her business like less than three years ago. She's in Northern California. She's grown it to charging over $7,000 per wedding film. And it came from being very intentional. So we wanted mm -hmm. to interview mm -hmm. her. She also hosts a little podcast called the Level Up Your Wedding Film Business podcast. It's growing. It's doing well. So we talked to her about that. She's got a challenge going on. Lots of good stuff. And I think it's really encouraging. We talk about female filmmakers and how they can be breaking through in the industry right now, Nick. Chalk full of uh, good stuff. It's a fresh episode, like I said. No, John, it's a super fresh episode. Let's go ahead and true. jump in. And Taylor Petrinovich is here with us today. We are so excited. Welcome to the How to Film Weddings podcast. You have arrived. Yeah, I just wanted thank to say hi. So much. <laughs> yes, tell us, tell us who you are. Give the How to Film Weddings listeners a little rundown on where you're at, kind of what your business looks like, that kind of thing. Yeah, so my name is Taylor Petrinovich. I am based out of Sacramento, California. Um, I predominantly serve Northern California, so that's kind of from Tahoe down through the Bay Area to like Carmel area. Um, but I also am in the process of expanding to a select number of destinations um, kind of internationally. I'm kind of pushing towards Europe, so France and Italy would be cool. Um, I only want to do a few, to the, a few of those a year though. Mm -hmm. Um, what else did you ask? <laughs> yeah, so you you're in an ugly area of the country that's hard to make look pretty with Carmel and yeah, it's yeah. I've done a couple weddings up there. It's really hard. The lights really bad and stuff. So sorry about that. No. So when did you start doing weddings? And if you're from somewhere else, it's an actually a really pretty area. Um, <laughs> sometimes my sarcasm doesn't translate very well. People leave me comments and stuff. I don't want that anymore. But uh, <laughs> when did you get started? Uh, kind of, I know that you're serving more of a higher, like getting to a higher end market and stuff. So kind of, when did you start? What got you into weddings? Uh, what drew you to weddings and kind of that, that side of your story? Yeah. So I've been filming weddings for about three and a half years. Um, I started with a YouTube channel, like way before I started, um, filming weddings. I, when I was pregnant with my first daughter, I have two kids. Um, I started like a mom channel. <laughs> and so I kind of accumulated a lot of gear. Um, I saw like semi success. I think I had like 10,000 subscribers or something. So nice. I was started to like learn video production and kind of how to work the algorithms and stuff, but I got tired of making that content. Um, and so my husband actually suggested that I started making videos for other people. So it started out as trying to do like maternity or first birthdays, quickly found out that that was going to be a lot harder to like create a market <laughs> than it would be to join another market that already exists. So a friend from high school asked me to shoot her wedding and I did. I think that one was for like 875 or something. Nice. Um, 
I really enjoyed it. The editing was so fun, so much more fun than, you know, making a mom video with like <laughs> talking about baby products. <laughs> so, I need to uh, find so those videos stat. I need they're to find still those. up. They're still up. <laughs> I'm going to download them. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, <laughs> so where was I? Okay. And then, so I loved it. I created like a business name, logo, everything, you know, DIY, how we all do in the beginning and just started like pushing it um, on local Facebook groups and got, I don't know, I think like seven clients that first year um, and then 20 clients the following year. So just kind of like hit the ground running. Um that's kind of my personality though. I'm kind of an all in kind of person. So, so yeah. third year in, you're, you're in your third year in, what does business look like for you in, you know, we're at the end of 2020 now, which is crazy, but what does business look like this year? Kind of, you know, how many did you shoot? What were you charging? And then kind of the future next year, where are you kind of at um, with that side of things? Yeah. So obviously everyone can relate to COVID kind of messing with best laid plans this year, but um, I've actually found a lot of silver linings in that I've allowed myself a lot of extra time to expand into like consuming more education. And so I'll get into that kind of in a minute, but um, on average, I would say the weddings that I had booked for this year were in like the 4,000, um, but for next year, I'm booking into like the 7,000 range starting at 52. Yeah, so it's been a year of growth considering this time last year, I was shooting weddings for like $2,000. So just kind of like took off. So incredible. I, I appreciate that you just said about looking for silver linings through, you know, COVID and just all this stuff that's going on. And I think that um, it's so easy for all of us to just bag on 2020 and how awful it was and how, you know, business didn't go how we wanted to. And rightfully so, right? Like, I mean, we can be really frustrated with the situation, but I, I, I think it's great that you took the time to say, okay, I can't shoot weddings right now, but what can I do? And instead <clears> of being <throat> super bummed out about the stuff that you cannot do, you took charge a little bit and focused on the things that you can do. And I think that that my wife and I were actually talking about this yesterday, that I think that's something that a lot of us it's not necessarily our go-to to look at stuff on the positive side, unless you're just a very positive person, right? But uh, start start looking at things. Okay, um, you know, she was talking about couples, and she's like, okay, maybe I can't have 200 people at my wedding, but the 50 people that are there are ones that I really want there that I really care about, and I'm really glad, you know, like being more intentional about it. So um, that, that that's great, you know, that you did that with your business and, you know, you're now you're booking, you know, $7,000 weddings. So the stuff that you have learned, the stuff that you've implemented is definitely, um, helping you and improving you, um, in, in your business. So anyway, I just, I just, I appreciate that comment. How's it? Yeah, no, thank you. Um, I am kind of a positive person. I don't know if you can just tell from like the way I talk, but I'm like very like high energy and bubbly. That's just how I am. But and I hate to say this because there was a lot of negativity this year and a lot of suffering and pain. But for me in my business, it's been kind of like an undercover blessing um, just because it's pushed me to places that I probably wouldn't have gone if I was mm -hmm. really busy just working in my business instead of on my business. So, <clears throat> And I think it, it has to be noted that you started your business, you know, you're a very new person in the industry when I mean, you're you know, only a few years in and it's like, wait, how are you like, you're, you've grown a lot. Like you, your company has grown. Um, I would love to kind of hear the story of the growth of your company. I know you just are changing the name of your company and different things, but you got going, you started realizing this was a market. Obviously you're in a higher paying market, you know, in Northern California and all these, you know, it's, it's different than certain spots in the country, but at the same time, 5,000 starting price, no matter where you are, is nothing to joke about. And especially in like your second year, you know, full year booking these kinds of things. So I want to talk a little bit about the growth of your company. And if somebody's out there watching or listening and they're just getting going or a couple years in, what were some of those nuggets that you are pulling now realizing that I did these things right and I started to really grow my company? Yeah. So for the first two years, um, I just kind of took all the weddings that came my way, which was great. I think that everyone should do some sort of variation of that um, because we need the practice and the repetition. Um, but I was doing that very unintentionally um, and I was filling out my calendar without a, being able to have space for things that would actually give me joy. And so 
I started doing a lot of soul searching and like, like really being true with myself with why I wanted to even film weddings in the first place. And it boils down to two things. And I think this played a pivotal role in kind of my direction. Um, I do this because I can't just be a full-time parent. <laughs> I just can't. I need something to occupy my mind. Um, and I really like being creative. And so the direction that I want to go in towards the luxury market fuels my creativity because with higher budgets comes more intricate details, more beautiful venues. And so I'm not necessarily aiming for that market because of the price tag that comes with it. I'm aiming for that market because it fuels me creatively. Um, and I'm working with like <clears throat> higher level professionals and it just like, it just fuels me. So, um, so as soon as I kind of was able to determine why I wanted to hit that market and then how to get there, I started looking at my body of work and being really honest with myself and my body of work did not represent the kind of clients that I wanted to to work with. And so I started intentionally seeking out opportunities to create work, even if it was just for Instagram, that truly represented those ideal clients so that when they stumbled across my Instagram or across my website, they would see themselves in my work, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, totally. I, I think that a problem that <clears throat> most people uh, you know, it, it's, it's the Michael Scott plan, the 40 step plan of getting, getting the business, you know, how you want it. Number 40 is, you know, okay, I am shooting these high end weddings. Now what's 39, what's 30, you know, and, and you have the end goal, the idea, but you have absolutely nothing else how to get there. All of us, you know, I remember saying, um, in like 2017, I was like, I want to charge, you know, by the end of the year, $4,000 for a wedding, you know, but it, it just stayed there. Like there wasn't anything you know, deeper in that, you know, we, we didn't have a plan. And I really appreciate how you said, I, I want to shoot those, those higher end weddings, but there, you know, you, you, f you were intentional with it. You, there was a purpose behind it. You know, you're like, I, I, I want to do this, but it's because I want to serve these clients well, and I want to interact with them and I want to give them something, you know, more. It's not just, oh, well, I want to charge $8,000. So I need to start going after the people with the money, which I'm sure is nice. And, you know, you like it that they're able to spend more, but there's, you know, something more and something deeper to that. So can you maybe... For, for a second, talk, talk about, you know, kind of that thought process of, you know, saying like, like, how did, how did you map that out? You know, when you got from, okay, I, I want, I, I really want to, you know, charge these to run your business how you want to. Am I making sense? I feel like I kind of was talking and my brain wasn't where my mouth was. Um, I think I get it. <laughs> I can I'm try. It, and if Nick. I do, you're doing great, buddy. You're doing great, oh, Nick. Keep it up. I just, man. I can see this happens every now and then, and I could see it on John's face. Whenever I got there, he just kind of looked at me like, "Oh, Nick, nope, nope. I don't know where you're going, but okay." So sometimes Nick starts a thought. He starts a sentence. He doesn't know where it's going to end, and he finds it on the way. And sometimes he gets lost. That's just okay. Oh man, <laughs> any. It's all good. Another, another cup of coffee for you. Yeah, yeah. So I think I understand what you're asking. I can start answering it. And if that's not the road that we're going <laughs> well, down, you'd be like, nope. Awesome. <laughs> yes, yes. I think I get it. I'll try, Nick. <laughs> she's very positive. She, she's very positive I, and lovely. So she's going to I want to see it. what she has to say from that right. question. <laughs> from that question, there wasn't a question. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So um, I, I would say the first step is determining where I want to end up. If you don't know where you want to go, then you can't develop a roadmap to get there. And so seeing, you know, my three or five year goal ahead of me, I'm able to kind of um, take incremental steps. And that all starts with um, laying the foundations of my business that appeal to the kind of market that I want to work in. And so the first thing I did was um, I joined this coaching group, which has been amazing. It is hosted by two luxury planners here in the US. They're in the South, um, but these ladies are doing half a million dollar weddings. And so they know what luxury is. And so that whole um, coaching group is telling us what we need to do. And so I'm just like absorbing as much information as possible. And I immediately um, hired a brand designer. Um, it was brought to my attention that my business name sounded a little bit more budget. Um, my old business name was Fleeting Moments Cinema, and they are really pushing people towards seeing themselves not as a commodity, like 
something that you could buy off the shelf, but as an artist that is being commissioned to create a one of a kind piece of work, which is what we are, um, as like snooty as that sounds, it's true. And so um, I rebranded <clears> just <throat> to my name, um, even though my name is hard to say, <laughs> uh, it's Petrinovich. So I'm just my name now. I worked with a brand designer um, that kind of got me lined up in the direction where I wanted to go. And now it's just it's just running the play. So mm-hmm. um, creating work that reflects reflects those weddings that I want to be booking in the form of styled shoots, um, which is doing a lot of amazing things beyond just getting um, stuff for my portfolio. I'm building relationships with some of the more high-end photographers and planners in my area. I'm getting published on places like Style Me Pretty and Insider, um, which kind of helps with credibility because I think Mm -hmm. that um, maybe clients wouldn't really care, but I think that people who are going to refer you care that you're a credible vendor. Um, So that plays a huge role in showing that you're taking this seriously and not just kind of in it for a minute. Um, and then now it's just working my way up. Each wedding will be a stepping stone kind of to show what I can do for that next wedding. And I'm entering each wedding day, thinking of it as an audition for my next one. So yeah, not good. only in the work that I'm creating, but in the relationships I'm building, the way I dress, the way I'm communicating, um, truly seeing them as auditions. <laughs> so, so I had a, a lunch with a friend yesterday. He's moving to a new state and he was, uh, he's a photographer and he's like, I really want to grow a business there. And, you know, we, we had this conversation and after the end of the conversation, he was like, I feel like I now have a roadmap or a plan to get to this. You know, it, it makes more sense now that we've laid it out. And I think so many people are like, okay, I, I know I want to win. I don't have a plan. I don't want. And so, you know, for you, it seems as though, like only being a couple of years into your business, um, you are determined, you have grit, but you're also very self-aware to say, okay, this was good for now. This fleeting moment cinema was good, but I got to change some things up. I'm, I'm educating myself and I'm learning and I'm growing and I'm putting together a plan. I think a lot of people, you know, I've mentioned it before on the podcast, but likening it to, you know, whenever I lost 30 pounds in the last year or Nick in the middle of losing, you know, some weight, getting fit by 40. Um, yeah, we hired a trainer and they told us, hey, this is I'm a pro. This is what you should be looking at. This help giving us some clarity of like, this is the roadmap you should be on. You should mm-hmm. be eating this way based on your body type and your goals. OK, what are the goals? OK, now let's develop a plan and a roadmap. And then it just comes down to the people that succeed develop that plan and then stick to their roadmap and keep building momentum as they're going in a lot of folks it's like okay i'm going to eat healthy and i'm you know excited to exercise and i exercise for three weeks and then i just kind of fall off or and so having that you know the begin with the end in mind kind of mentality has really you know rocket fueled your business it seems and so when did you start like have you always been like motivated that way or did you get going in your business and then realize you needed some help what was the story of like going from whatever you were charging the 875 to now you know 30 months later whatever charging over you know six or seven thousand dollars for a wedding what, what do you attribute that to yeah so um nick and i could probably geek out about this but i'm an enneagram three <laughs> so um that's the achiever and so it's kind of always been my nature um through school, I was a competitive swimmer. And so it's just kind of like ingrained in me. Um, and I think I had it with my business from the beginning. I just didn't have um, one place to target all of that energy towards. It was just kind of like <laughs> energy was just shooting out in all different <laughs> spots. And like, I wasn't gaining any traction. Um, but as soon as like, I was able to like very slowly um, target it towards one purpose and one goal, I think it all the energy was concentrated to that one area. So I think that pushed me. Um, I know that with a lot of um, of the more like celebrity people in the industry, we can watch what they're doing and um, we kind of idolize them. And so for a while, um, I talk about White and Reverie a lot. <laughs> um, they're my favorite. And so when they started doing elopements, I thought that success meant doing exactly what they were doing. And so I started going down that elopement um, rabbit hole and quickly realized that it was not for me. And so I think that um, we get shiny object syndrome where we're seeing people mm-hmm. succeed in all the different areas and it's hard to um, to reel it in and see that we're not here to be 
Nick Miller or to be John Bunn or to be Kaylin and Christine. Um, we're here to be the best version of you <clears throat> with your own specific goals that align with you. So that's really Man. good. That's all. Yeah. That's all really good stuff. And um, I'm sure that we could talk a lot about Enneagram stuff. John loves. It's his favorite thing. <laughs> he always acts about. like I don't love it. Here's my thing. We're going to talk about Enneagram. OK, we're going to freaking do it again. Here's my problem about the I Enneagram. I think I say this every people, time it comes up, and I think he says this every time it comes up. <laughs> I just hate whenever a system puts a person in a box and they think they know me based on a number. Yes, I get it, but it's, it, it makes sense. I get it. Enneagram threes react this way under stress. It's helpful. I, I appreciate it. But whenever Nick Nick's first question is, what, what Enneagram are you? I just want to figure you out without knowing you. And that's a bunch of crap. Okay. Soapbox off. All right, back to you, Nick. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I was going to say about that other than just to bring it up because I knew you would go off on it and it would make me laugh. So anyways, uh, Taylor, uh, we are going to go to break here. And when we come back, we will talk more with Taylor Petrinovich about her podcast and some other stuff she has going on. So we'll be right back after this. Are you tired of just sending a link to your couples when you are done with their film? Do you want to deliver something they can actually see and feel? something physical. We are so excited to tell you about Photo Flash Drive. Photo Flash Drive's customizable hard drive and solid state drives give your client a peace of mind. Take your delivery experience to the next level with your couples. Photo Flash Drive uses state-of-the-art Seagate drives that are 100% customizable. PFD has the ability to print your logo, your couple's names, or both on the drive. You guys, we picked up a few of these and they are so good. We cannot wait to blow our clients away with this next level physical product. Not only can you customize these drives, Photo Flash Drive offers high quality, customizable boxes that you can brand with your logo to really blow your couples away. My favorite is the rustic slide box that has our logo engraved on the cover. Having a high quality product like this is something that has been definitely lacking in my business. The custom hard drives and solid state drives with cases are a great way to sell additional items to your couple, a great way to offer a full branding experience, and a great way to leave an impression. And today we have a deal for you. Use promo code HTFW15 for 15% off all hard drives, solid state drives, and cases. Head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash photo flash drive to see all the details. Finding the perfect song for your wedding film can be so frustrating. We spend countless hours searching for the perfect song. When it comes to licensing music, Nick and I both love Musicbed. Not only do they have the best music, but their website makes it so easy to find the perfect song and to find it fast. We have both been using the Musicbed's wedding subscription for years and cannot recommend it enough. Not only are they adding new music from incredible musicians like Chapters, The Light, The Heat, and Tony Anderson all the time, they've made it incredibly easy to search their library for mood, genre, instrumentation, and even key. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed and use promo code HTFW for a free month of a Musicbed wedding subscription. howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed. All right, we are back from break, and we're going to go ahead and jump into our question of the day presented by Wedditor. Wedditor, more than freelance, more than outsourcing. Highly recommend them. Check them out if you're backlogged. They're great. So, Taylor, here's our question of the day that I want to ask you. You are a female wedding filmmaker, and you are three years in, and you are really succeeding. Succeeding, You are really thriving. So, um, to all of the, the female filmmakers that are listening out there, what's... What do you have to say to them? What what would you say to them to just encourage them to, you know, keep on going? Oh, I would say that um, the biggest thing is seeing that you're a female as a huge step up from the dudes. It sets you apart from the rest of the market. I know it does for me. And I totally, I hate to use the word exploit, but I do. I exploit it. I would. <laughs> and I think it's great. Like, a lot of photographers are females in their late 20s, early 30s. It's really easy to make friends with them and just get on their level. Um, and I don't know. I think it's actually a bonus. We can see things sometimes a little bit better with our emotions than, than Geist can. And so to just heavily lean into your strengths <clears throat> as a female. Um, I, and I would I say think... that one thing, don't let um, heavy gear intimidate you. Um, 
I, I don't know. I lift weights a lot because I was having a hard time with my Ronin. Um, and so I love this. I love, I'm yeah, so excited so, for you to keep going. Don't keep going. let this your like great. natural, um, maybe drawbacks, um, hold you back because there's always a way around them and always a way to push through them. Mm. Um, you just have to just do it. I love it. So. Two, two, two things I want to say to that. Um, and I'm not trying to mansplain anything. Um, one, one would be, <laughs> what, yep. what, yeah, what, one would be, I love that you said, okay, you're a female, like lean into that. We all, the thing that separates you in your business is that you are different. And we all, we tell, lean into what makes you different, lean into, but everyone wants to be seen as the same. Right. And so I, I love that you are actually leaning into that, um, you know, <laughs> manipulate the system or whatever you want to say, you know, which which is totally fine. Like like pull on people's heartstrings and let them know, hey, this is what makes me different. And this is why I am valuable. OK, um, for the longest time, um, whenever I went to the first venture workshop, Christine Rome said she's like, I'm our editor. Like I edit all of White and Reverie's stuff and it dawned on me. You said that stuff about tapping into emotions differently. I am really surprised that there are not more female editors out there. Like I, I am really surprised. And, and it's because, you know, I, I'm putting my film together and I might be doing a really great job or whatever. And then my wife comes in. She's like, well, you can't use this shot because you're shooting up at the bribe and it gives her a double chin and you can't do this and you can't like just all of this, like that I don't even like think about, but just you, you know, being female, you're thinking differently and you're coming at it differently and your emotions are in tune differently. And that's okay. Like women and men can have like, that's okay. We're, we're, we're made different. Right. And so I, I think that that's, you, you do have so much to offer. And I, I just love hearing that, that you're like, Hey, I, I, I am me and I am woman and I am different and that's okay. And here's the reasons why, and, and really using that to your advantage. I think that's, I think it's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I think that we all have our strengths. Um, something I lack in is like technology. I am not a techie person. And so I just buy gear, learn exactly how to use that gear and stick to it. Whereas maybe someone, which usually guys are more like in tune with gear, like maybe they'll like change it up a lot because that's something that they're good at and they enjoy. And so it's just like finding your own strengths and playing to those strengths. And we're all going to have different (coughs) ones. So that's the beauty of it. I, I want to chime in here, especially to the female filmmakers out there. Like I have two little girls of my own and I'm so happy that they're going to grow up in a home and a society that is now more inclusive of females than ever before. And like I will get on a tangent on a soapbox about how I feel it is very unfair. You know, the society is very unfair to females. And, you know, I'm very jealous of the female filmmakers because you know, it is much, um, you know, the, the ability that they have most with wedding films and interacting with the couples and just being in the room with the girls and all that, like, that's the kind of stuff, like, I just think there's so many wedding filmmakers out there that are female that feel like that they don't stack up to the guys with the gear and, or the whatever. And it's just like, I would heavily encourage you that you are, you're strong. You are, you know, very capable. You're able to kill it. Like there's nothing holding you back. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't do something because you can. And like, I honestly think, you know, how wedding photography used to be male dominated. Now I'm way more females. It's like, I understand. And again, it's like, I have female shooters that work for me, female editors that edit for me. And like, you are strong and you like, I, I think, and I'm pretty sure the wedding video industry is getting ready to be like overrun by, you know, females that are kicking the dude's butts. So Stay oh, yeah. strong. I give it five yeah. years. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I mean, it seems that video follows photo trend. You know, we're just 10 years behind. And, mm-hmm. you know, in the 90s, there was that switch where it was basically mostly men and very few females in photo. And now it's overwhelmingly female. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Watch out, guys. Yeah, guys. I saw at Target the other day. Um, I have two daughters as well, John, uh, but we were walking down the Barbie aisle and there was a film director Barbie and she had a big old camera and I was hey. like, I showed my daughters. I was like, look, <laughs> I think <laughs> it's awesome. incredible. Yes. It and is. I mean, I, I definitely think it's still very not even in society, but keep pushing, keep, you know, keep being 
strong and keep, you know, keep pushing this industry forward if you're out there for sure. Um, speaking of p- pushing the industry forward, um, you know, you're a couple of years into your business. You've been growing it. You started a podcast. Um, yes. Would love to talk about your podcast, why you decided to start it. And then have you ha- did you have any reservations being newer in, uh, you know, was there any like uh, imposter syndrome, any of that kind of stuff? And what have you done? I think it, it's part of your DNA growing your business so quickly, growing this podcast quickly. Um, you know, explain to us what your podcast is, how it got going, and then maybe some of the things that you've had to overcome in getting it going. Yeah. So my podcast is called Level Up Your Wedding Film Business. I started it back in January. So we're coming up on a year here pretty quick. Um, I would say that I think we all struggle with imposter syndrome, especially when we start something new and when we have someone else who's already kind of in that space who has more experience. So that's you guys. Um, (laughs) But I think that it's true that there's room at the table for everybody and we all offer unique perspectives and I can offer people something completely different than what you guys can. Um, It's not something that's duplicatable. I don't know if that's the right word, but you know what I'm saying. Um, (laughs) And I think that there's some beauty in learning from somebody who's in the thick of it along with you or only just one or two steps ahead of you instead of someone who's five years ahead because I think that the industry changes so quickly and I just so recently was doing these things that I'm teaching about on the podcast. And so I think that resonates with people. Um, I make an effort to bring a lot of different um, industry people on. So talking about branding, copywriting, website, SEO. um, And then I just brought on, you know, a few planners. And so kind of getting an all-encompassing narrative of the wedding industry. That is one thing I think that some people consider themselves to be a part of the videography industry, but I see myself as being a part of the wedding industry. And Mm -hmm. so to truly understand it and all that it encompasses, you really need to learn from like all the different areas or else you're never going to truly like understand how to get to where you want to go. So just trying to offer different perspectives. Um, Yeah, getting it off the ground was, I mean, a lot of energy as it is for any other project, you know, it takes most of the rocket fuel to kind of during takeoff, but I feel like I just have reached cruising altitude and it's kind of, um, fun to see, um, all of the people that I'm reaching and to get, you know, DMS every day from people. Um, so it's been really fun and I'm happy that I can be a female voice in the industry because there's only a few of us, um, providing education. So I wanted to just kind of be um, that beacon of light for all my fellow females out there and just offer a different perspective. So, yeah. And I've, I've tuned in yeah. to a lot of the episodes. It's really good stuff. A lot of times it's just you or you'll bring on guests. It's a, a shorter format, usually 30 minutes or so, I believe, um, yeah. which is great and digestible. And so I know whenever I saw that you were doing it, it's funny because it's always an interesting, like we're <clears throat> Nick and I are very much believers in if it's helping the wedding video industry, if it's elevating the wedding industry, we want to champion it. You know, if somebody else is producing a course, you know, we have our course, but we want to promote other people's courses or other people's <laughs> channels. And I remember seeing you and, you know, your podcast and I was like, who is this? What are they? What are they up to? Like started watching and just started watching from afar. And it's like you just put in the work, you're consistent, you're branding, you're updating everything, you're doing the work, you're putting in things. You know, you had us on your podcast and like, I just remember reaching out to you and saying, if you need anything, please let me know, like whatever you need, open book from us. We want there to be more, you know, wedding podcast, people out there growing a podcast. And so um, it's been fun watching your channel grow. I know that like your download numbers are way up and they're continuing to grow. And so we wanted you to be able to tell how to film weddings, where their, your podcast is. So why don't you tell them how to find it, that kind of stuff um, with where to find your podcast and all that. Yeah, sure. So it's available <clears throat> on the major podcatchers. Just learned that was a word. That's fun. Um, so it's on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, the major ones. You just search level up your wedding film business or you can go to my website. Um, I made a website for the podcast called thelevelupco.com, all one word, or on Instagram at thelevelupco, and there's just links to it everywhere. So and you do a great um, job about- on your Instagram. You're killing it. You're doing you're doing all the things right. You've put it. You know you're building it with the crockpot method. It seems mm-hmm. you're slow and steady. I see you do like a feature Friday on your posts, and you're you're 
featuring filmmakers and it's just a really cool community um, over there and, and really great information. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. You were going to say something and I, I didn't mean to. No, it's okay. Yeah. Um, Instagram's kind of my jam. I'm not big on Facebook at this point. So I'm kind of um, using just Instagram and the podcast to kind of reach people. But yeah, I do a uh, feature Friday where I'll feature one filmmaker just to kind of elevate and inspire and show that we're all in this together. It's just people of all different levels. And I think that we as humans have an innate desire to be seen and valued. And there is value in every one of us here, no matter how long we've been a part of the industry or our level within the industry. Um, we all deserve to be recognized and appreciated. So that's just love it. my little way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. Love it all. Um, and yeah, as John said, you know, it could be, um, we, we want to be open and we want to be a place where we can help and, um, help you find the education, help you find listener, you know, the stuff that you need. And so we're happy to have people like Taylor on or other people that have education stuff because, John and I know like we we learn stuff from new people all of the time. And so for us to think that we um, that we have it all and you can only get all of the information from us and you have to have our perspective like we we definitely don't believe in that. So we're, we're happy to have you on and promote the, your your podcast and your stuff. And I know that you have something really fun and interesting coming out here really soon. So why don't you just take a minute and uh, talk about that? Yeah, so I am hosting a free three-day challenge. It starts on November 10th, um, so it'll go that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, I think that's very soon after this goes <laughs> live. Um, mm-hmm. So you can go register for that um, at the website, thelevelupco.com slash free challenge, or I'm sure you guys will link it in the show notes. Um, I'll link it everywhere, so if you find <laughs> me on the internet, you'll know where it is. Um, but I'm going to be hosting live trainings, um, those three days in a private Facebook group. And the goal with that is really to just get us all ready for an insane 2021. (laughs) I think that most of us have a lot of work to do in 2021. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. laying all the foundation to kind of make this an opportunity to really push our businesses forward and not just survive the next year, but really thrive and have it count Mm. towards subsequent years. Um, So it's going to be a lot of work on mindset and goal setting and um, just a few different fun things, getting your business truly ready to succeed, whatever success looks like for you. So cause awesome. Awesome. That was the word I was trying to say. Awesome. awesome. So that's the levelupco.com slash free challenge. Uh, again, yeah. you can check the links uh, in our description if you would like to sign up for that. But um, I, I think I'm going to go register for that so I can, you know, take part and 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 hear and listen and, um, you know, help help my business for next year. Because, yeah, John and I have been saying that for a while. We agree. We think that 2021 is going to be absolutely crazy. So I was talking to a photography friend and they's like, we're having to cap our weddings but we're basically only getting paid for two thirds of them because a third of them is people from this year that have already paid in full and had to move to next year. And so, you know, just kind of stressing out about that. And if you're not prepared, you're, you're, you might, might be in a world of hurt. So uh, definitely check that out. The levelupco.com slash free challenge. John, what, what, what else do we have to add? Anything else, Taylor, you'd like to add to the How to Film Weddings community before we sign off today? Any other nuggets, bits of wisdom, anything you want to say while you've got the the microphone in front of you? Yeah, I would just say, um, like I was saying earlier, I think the first step towards reaching your goals is to actually determine what your goals are and to not get that shiny object syndrome. Like really just choose a point of focus and target all of your energy towards that. Um like I said earlier, styled shoots has been a great way. I've been able to create content that exactly speaks to my target audience. I've put a few grand into that, so it is an investment, but um, I would say that it's really worth it, especially if you have nothing in your portfolio that really communicates what you can do um, and what you can do for your ideal client. So I would just say, um, do everything in your power to succeed, and there's a lot of different things that we can do. So I love it. So good and so refreshing to hear from you. It's really fun watching from afar you grow your business as well as your podcast and um, you know if you're out there listening definitely check out the levelupco.com check out all of the details and all that good stuff thank you so much for taking the time to be on and we will hope and, and we hope you have an awesome awesome day again thanks for being on thank you so much
Well, Taylor, thank you so much for coming on this week's episode of How to Film Weddings. We really appreciate you taking the time. Again, we want you to head over to the levelupco.com slash free challenge. There you can sign up for Taylor's three day challenge and talking all about 2021 and setting goals and being prepared for what is going to happen next year. We're dropping this on Monday. The challenge starts tomorrow as we drop this. So make sure you head over there today to sign up for that so that you can be a part of this challenge. John, it has been great to hang out with you. It's been super fresh. And until next time, we will see you. See you guys.